Jim Ratcliffe makes his plans clear in a recent interview. Manchester United are preparing a big clear out this summer. New stadium, new board, new recruitment. What is Brailsford's role and what is Ratcliffe's plan for the transfer window and more? Lots to dive into in today's video, so please do smash that like button, subscribe down below and stay tuned. We're going to get into some quotes from Ratcliffe's interview and then some big and interesting news stories regarding Manchester United. So diving into Sir Jim Ratcliffe's interview, this is one of the first things he said which I thought was important and I wanted to bring this up first. He was asked about Manchester United with the GT Cycling Club interview and he said, you have to believe with Manchester United if we get all the right people in the right boxes doing the right things with an elite sporting environment where it's driven and tense but underneath it's supported with people there five, six days a week, results will drop out the bottom. All of those things are not right today. And Jim McGriff has made it very clear when speaking about United. He said, I'm not going to talk about Ten Hag because every manager's failed at United post Alex Ferguson and he's a good manager to fail so it's got to be beyond the manager it's got to be the environment and Jim Ratcliffe and what I really appreciate from Jim Ratcliffe is someone that you know as I said I, I wanted Qatar I wanted full sale I would full sale I was very reluctant about Jim Ratcliffe but you know he's not put a foot wrong and I, and I will say that you know yes the Glazers have stayed here but we knew that was going to happen he's not put a foot wrong in terms of his comments and his understanding to say look the Glazers are the biggest own the problem at this club not the Glazers well he's not said the Glazers are the biggest problems at this club, problem at this club but he knows that it's beyond the manager he knows it's above and beyond he's taken control of sporting operations he's taken a lot of control of the Glazers because he knows that and he knows it's about changing the environment getting the right people in place and he said it's not a light switch at Manchester United much longer road to travel because there's so many aspects of the club and the game you have to get right um, that's what he said as well but he, he basically said you know at Man United it's about having the right people in the right place creating the right environment and you know with an organization you need the right people you need the best in class he said right now Manchester City unfortunately are the best in class and we're taking Omar Brado, we're taking Jason Wilcox you know we're, we're getting a much better relationship with Manchester City but Ratcliffe is right you know, we've only spent a little bit less than Manchester City in recent years. And if you look at NetSpend because of their sales, we've probably spent more than Manchester City post Alex Ferguson. But City are levels ahead of us because they spent that money properly because they've not had Ed Woodward saying, let's go spend 80 million on Maguire and let's go spend, and Murr to say, let's spend 85 million on Anthony. You know, they've been smart with their business and, and, and they've actually gone and got people who are long term deals in January rather than signing 30 year olds on loan. And Jim Ratcliffe was asked about transfers. And this was my favourite thing that Ratcliffe had said, because this is what I've been saying Man United needs to do for years. I'm fed up. Of, I don't want to sign big name stars. Everyone says, oh, we should sign Liao. We should Mbappe. And everyone links us to the big players. Even Frankie De Jong, I just can't be bothered with anymore. I want United to find gems, like kind of what Arsenal did at the start of their evil, kind of what Liverpool did at the start of their evil. And I think this is what Ratcliffe wants to do. He said, it's not our focus on buying Jude Bellingham. And that isn't the solution, spending a lot of money on a couple of great players, which is what Chelsea did. He said, um, over, that's what United have done over the last 10 years. The first thing we need to do is get the right people in the right boxes who are managing and organising the club to make sure recruitment's right. That's such a vital club of bringing the club today. He said, the most important thing isn't buying a lot of expensive players like Chelsea did and Tom Bohe. It's actually getting the right people in recruitment and giving them the money to spend on a multitude of players because it's about having the right people, which is absolutely spot on. And he said, I'd rather find the next Mbappe than spend a fortune trying to buy success, buying and you know, buying Mbappe in a way. He said it's, it's more challenging to find the next Mbappe in Bellingham. And Jim Mack sort of described it as, you know, I want to find the next Mbappe. I want to find the next Jude Bellingham. That's what I want to do. And I like that from Ratcliffe because if you look at Liverpool's rebuild under Klopp, Van Dyke was at Southampton, Mane was at Southampton, Firmino was at Hoffenheim, Salah was at Roma, Alisson was at Roma, Matip was at Schalke. You know, you look at those people key to the rebuild. Trent came through the academy. Robertson was from Hull. You know, and they brought in these good players that were young with lots of potential from lesser clubs than Liverpool for, for decent fees. Obviously, Van Dyke was quite expensive and they were developed under a good coach and a good sort of strategy and a good system into becoming good players. And people will say, oh, well, Ten Hag's not a good coach, this and that. I think that Ten Hag, if you buy him the right players, he can develop them. If you've got a technical ceiling, you can develop them. You know, Garnacho, Mayno, Hoyland and Delo have all developed under Eric Ten Hag because they've got a technical ceiling. They're young and they can be stuff. I don't think he can raise the floor of players. If there's players that can't play as football, Tenog can't make them much better. But if there's players that can play as football, we've seen what Tenog's done with De Jong and De Ligt. I think Tenog has the ability, if you've given the right players that can play as football in the system, to raise those players and create superstars in De Jong and De Ligt in the past. Um, you know, Gravenberg was fantastic under Tenog as well. Um, you know, you look at it and you think, well, if the system's in place, and I think I like that from Ratcliffe. I don't want to be going and buying the next Mbappe in Bellingham and, you know, spending 200 million on, on two players. I think maybe in a few years, if we're, let's say in two years' time, we are one point of winning the league title and Man City win it on the final day. And that's because maybe we don't have 
an elite midfielder, then yeah, you go spend 100 million on a Bellingham. But I think the place that United are at, it's getting the Mats Weifers, it's getting the Tolibos, it's getting the Jared Bramfraits, maybe an Elise, maybe a Nico Williams, maybe a, a Xerxes, getting those players that have come from lesser clubs in that 30 to 50 million range, but will come to United and make an impact. I mean, Manchester City did that at the start of their rebuild as well. You know, John Stones wasn't a massive player. He came from Everton. Sterling was just a young player from Liverpool. You know, Sane came from Schalke and he was, he was brilliant. He was Sane that, that before he got injured. He was, he was a baller. Mares came from Leicester. You, you've got to look at it like that. Now, I don't want to talk too much about that because we do need to talk about the outs as well. But I do want to get through some other comments that Matt have made in his interview before I get into the chance for news. He was said that it's a collective, but Dave Brailsford is the one in the middle of it all right now at United. He said it's where you start. You need to get the right organisation structures. In the old days of Alex Ferguson, he was the manager. Well, we don't have managers to say we have a coach and a coach will normally report to the sporting director and a sporting director will report to the CEO is what he said. But we need to get that structure in place. And he said Dave wouldn't profess uh, to ever say we need to buy that player because he thinks he's a good player. Dave would never do that. He knows that's not his skill set, but we need that skill set at United. So what he's saying is Dave Brailsford's coming in. He's looking at it. He's looking at what we need to do. And Dave Brailsford so it's going to be the guy to get the skill set in Dan Ashworth, in, you know, not Paul Mitchell now, but maybe Juki Friedman, someone that's going to be like, yeah, that's the player we need to sign. That's the player we need to sign. And it was said that by Ratcliffe, that him, Brailsford, Blong, everyone involved, talk on a daily basis. There's a group of us involved in Man United and the two most focused is Dave and myself. But now we've got Omar, who's on gardening me, but he's going to become a big part of the trio when he settles in as well. He didn't say anything about Ashworth, but we know that Ashworth will happen. It's just a matter of when in terms of Dan Ashworth to United. The deal will happen. We just don't know when. Um, continuing on as well, um, I just want to quickly get through his comments on the stadium. He said, I think Manchester United are the biggest sports brand in the world, so it needs to have a stadium that is uh, befitting the club and the brand. Might be the case 20 years ago, but it isn't today, uh, which is true. 20 years ago, we had a great stadium, but today, no. If you see Real Madrid, the Bernabeu, Camp Nou, look at them compared to the Premier League. We have nothing that compares. We need, we could refurbish the ground, he said, and do a nice job of that, but that would cost a billion and the club can shoulder that burden. But have you got the opportunity to choose um, and build a complete new ground and it'd be state-of-the-art 90 to, to 100,000 seat stadium that provides a platform for some big competitors in the north and it's true and I think Jim Ratcliffe's made it very clear he wants to build the next big stadium in the north he's, he's not interested well he would refurbish Old Trafford if he can't get the funding to build a new stadium because Old Trafford needs to be refurbished but I think from Sir Jim Ratcliffe he's made it quite clear you know I want to build the Wembley of the north I want to build a new stadium he's got his team together he's got his people together and his mission right now at Manchester United is to build a new stadium now I am going to get into the news but the last thing that Ratcliffe said in his interview that I really liked was Jim Ratcliffe saying this he said and was asked who he'd like to win the Premier League and he said I hate them all and I think that is the perfect answer that is the perfect answer from Continuing on into the last bit of the video, but it was said by iPaper Sport that Manchester United hoped to have as much money as possible to kickstart the Ineos era and are open to selling a number of players, including Scott McTominay and Harry Maguire, in order to raise funds to reshape the squad in the summer. And I mentioned this in my live stream, but I like this. McTominay has been good when he's featured this season, and Maguire has been good when he's featured this season, but ultimately you're not going to win a Premier League title with McTominay and Maguire in the starting eleven. While McTominay is great at coming off the bench and scoring goals and is unpredictable and could have some use next season, and ultimately we've got an opportunity to get 30 to 40 million for both of these players in the summer one of the few players we can raise money for we're not really going to get much money for a lot of the other players like Donny van der Beek or Anthony Martial and I think well yes you know Tomlin and Maguire have been okay this season it, that's not the standard we want people that we know are better than that we want to sell Tomlin and Maguire and replace them with better more important players rather than keeping them around because Tomlin scored goals and I, I like that Ineos have seen that Tomlin scored goals and been good this season and Maguire's been quite good this season but it's still like you know what we're open to sell them because overall yeah they've been decent this season but they're not good enough for the direction we want to go we need higher standards at United and finally talking about a guy that would be brilliant for Manchester United to sign talking about a guy that'd be brilliant for United to bring in Jao Nevers Bruno Fernandes sort of spoke about Jao Nevers him being linked with United and he said I don't know if the rumours about United and Jao Nevers are true but what I do know is he's ready for that jump he said Jao Nevers is ready for that jump he's an excellent player he's with the national team and that's why big clubs are after him and I think I don't think Jao Nevers will happen to Manchester United this summer because I think he's going to be that 70, 80 million player. And I think United are in a position where, unless they sell really well and they sell loads of players to make 200 million in sales, I think they're going to be in a position where they're going to be spying five, six positions for 30 to 50 million. I don't think they have the funds to spend over 60 million on one position. And I think John Nevers could be in the 80 million mark. But I do think in 2025, if he stays at Benfica another year, John Nevers could be one United go for because he's a baller. And I'm a big fan of that signing, but I don't see it happening. Listen, people, thank you for watching today's news update. Please do hit that like button. Of course, subscribe down below if you're new.
share the video. I will be back live at 6 p.m. So I'll see you then and bye.